So thank you. Welcome to this session uh, about good almost offline learning strategies. So um, a few words to myself. Uh, we are a Moodle partner in Austria, Think Modular. And here meet our lovely team, which is creating great content, creating great platforms. We are doing consultancy and also working with offline content. This is what drives us every day. So we're a team of 25. We are based in Vienna. And yeah, but our projects are worldwide. And this is also a little bit what we are pursuing to say, OK, uh, we have heard today, maybe in other sessions, I think it was uh, in the morning in Teleboard, Le leave no one behind. Get learning out there. This is more or less what we put on our agenda. So that's the reason why we dedicate ourselves a lot with offline learning, because we will see later, not everywhere, digital online learning is possible as maybe we understand it here. OK, um, I want to start with you. Yeah, I made a small Mentimeter um, inquiry. It might be to one or other uh, a stupid question, but please I ask you to answer that. So. Um, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Digital technology, so. So. I heard I have 15 minutes sharp, so I will really stop it within the next minute. So please, 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 vote, vote, vote. So, 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, ignition. Six, five, four, ready for takeoff. Three, two, one, takeoff. So, yeah. That's an interesting result. Um, the most of you have practically access on your workplace all the time. Yeah? Just, I, I see five of you not all the time, so, but the most of you have, have it. Um, wait a second. So, we made a very similar question in a different context. In this case, it was a TTC teacher training college in Malawi, um, and these were primary school teacher trainings, uh, uh, trainees, uh, where we set up a, a training program. And one of the questions was, OK, how many hours do you have functioning internet at your TTC, teacher training college? Very similar to the question that we have. The result is kind of different. It's already three years ago. So maybe now this answer will be different. Things change really quickly. But by that time, more of half of the students didn't have any, let's say, reliable internet connectivity. And this is what I would like to talk about today. Because if we go to offline learning, we have a lot of different aspects we have to consider. Yeah? But today, uh, due to time constraints, I would really go towards the learner's connectivity issue and analyze that and show you how we uh, deal with that in several projects. Yeah? OK, yeah, maybe some facts and figures before we, we, we start. So yeah, the situation is. The connectivity is really growing fast. I myself, I was working in just for instance in Mozambique for three years, and I was uh, responsible for new technology at a university where there, by the time, internet was really, really, really hard to get. And if I look at these figures, uh, this gives hope to say, okay, uh, even in, 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 let's say, in, on continents where there is, let's say, uh, not such a good connectivity or was a good connectivity, right now it's getting be better rapidly. If you see, uh, just for instance, 82% uh, of the uh, uh, population in the, on the African continent, just for instance, have 3G mobile network. Yeah? This for sure was a boost. But, uh, so. So, but we can't look just at continents. Continents is, is a very broad region of the world. Uh, we have to look a little bit closer. And just for instance, if you see uh, where the red regions are, people uh, have a lower usage of internet, lower than 20% of the population actually using the internet for whatever they do. It's not focused just to, to learning, but for all the purposes. So there are, let's say, countries where there might, you might have a target group which is not able to access for whatever reason, economically, bandwidth, technology. But don't worry, even Austria, where I'm coming from, has a lot of blind spots. Just for instance, if I want to call my mother-in-law, I have to do it on a landline. 
there's no way out. And uh, despite of maybe some, let's say, stereotypes, I really like to call her. Okay, let's focus a little bit more on the bandwidth issue, okay? Because bandwidth problems is not just bandwidth problems, because for each problem there can be a different strategy to work with. And I I'm really happy that Juan was around here, because one of it is the Moodle lab, but we come to that later. Um, yeah, best case, good bandwidth. It's just up here. Everything is fine, you have good bandwidth, you can watch videos, you can actually do any digital activity, it's not restricted in any, any kind. Next is slow bandwidth. We heard 3G. Watching video with 3G, I don't know who of you likes that. I don't know, I don't, the videos are really not so nice. So. But there's still bandwidth, there's still a few things to do. Temporarily not, no bandwidth. So it can happen for several reasons, power cuts whatsoever, that you don't have uh, internet available. But then you have even maybe in a good quality. Another um, problem could be geographically. So you are maybe in a valley, like my mother-in-law, but if she wants to call with the mobile phone, she has to go up to the hill. And this is a very common problem. If you look at this, uh, at this uh, fellow here on the side, yeah, the first thing, if we don't have connectivity, I think the most of us put their cell phones in the, the air. It doesn't make any difference, but it's an instinct we have. Um, but there are really strategies and then say, okay, how, what can we do about that? Or no bandwidth at all. So the next possibility where you can get bandwidth is miles, hours of cycling, swimming, whatever, away. But for each of these are some strategies and I want to show you two, uh, due to time constraints, yeah, I show you the two that we uh, actually uh, uh, set up. The Moodle app. I think the Moodle app, in terms of um, offline capabilities, is a game changer, to be honest. So it, it's already around for 10 years, it's mature, it's stable. We heard uh, Juan what is planned about that. I think this is a very promising uh, approach and we really like to use the Moodle app. And, and just for instance, what you see on the side, this is one of our projects that we did in Malawi as well. And there we implemented a training for EPOCOS. This is ultrasound machinery and doctors are, and medical staff is we trained them with that. And this is actually offline capable. We are, were using videos and we were using quizzes. Very simple didactical design, but it works really nice. And to the video, I come later because you could imagine video, okay, huge size, but we managed somehow to squeeze it in. You don't need any complex server structure. I come to that also later because you can see here the box. Yeah, there's Moodle installed, but it comes with a little trade-off. And this one you don't have with the app. The app, you can be, it can be used. You have a server, you use it. It synchronizes. Really, it's a charm. When we go back to the scenarios we had with the bandwidth, where we would consider using the app is just, for instance, with slow bandwidth. Okay, you go somewhere, you have slow bandwidth, you say download the course, and then you wait, maybe you put your cell phone here, go for a coffee or for a beer, come back, and then you have the content on it. Maybe you need two or three beers, maybe, so it depends. Um, temporarily no bandwidth. Okay, same thing here. You wait until you have internet, you download the course, and then it's available for you, content is there and you can actually use it. And relocate, yeah, go up to the hill, download the course, fine. What are the chances of, of, of such a setup? Okay, no end user maintenance. Maybe this is not entirely true. It's, you have, uh, 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 end users have to install the app anyway, but this is very simple. It's available on any app store, you download it, you connect, ready. This is what's really, really, this works really nice. Syncs with server automatically. So just for instance, you have a forum entry, you have a quiz, you can even do it offline. The quiz with a few tweaks, you have to be honest, but you can do that. So uh, don't use deferred feedback. I think this is still not working. Or Juan, I don't know. With the quiz. It is possible. It's not possible. Of course it's not possible, you can't do that. Five minutes, oh my God. Okay, let's go to the challenges. <laughs> yeah, not all interactivity is available. You have to check, okay, which one you can use actually. Um, the, uh, the Moodle app renders differently. 
performance than the, the, the online version. It means you have to cross-check, okay, how does my uh, interactivity I use actually behave? And uh, for client servers, of course, you need to be online somehow. Yeah. And it's Moodle only. The second one, it's the Moodle box. Uh, we heard it several times already. Um, we used it as well. It's actually a tiny Moodle server. It's over there. So everyone who is around, let's say, 10 meters could even actually log in, it's switched on, I installed the Moodle there, and it can be used. It's based on the Raspberry Pi, it's a tiny Moodle server. Um, the Moodle box initiative itself is, is mostly just the software. Uh, we pimped it a little bit because we, uh, very often where it was supposed to use, uh, there is also power issues and something like that. So we put in a UEPS and a battery, we put in a, a router, a stronger router, because this was one of the main drawbacks. Um, maybe the chances is this, this Moodle box is well documented. The Raspberry Pi is against its fame. It's really powerful, especially when you have enough memory, 8 gigabyte. And you can also install other platforms like in, uh, Nextcloud, Kiwix, whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's, it's actually more, let's say, broader than the Moodle app. I jump to the next one, maybe uh, to, to have a decision making. If you have a decision to make, okay, in my projects, which way to go, go where there's the most green, please. Yeah. <laughs> it means um, if you have to use the Moodle box, it can get somehow complex. But of course, there are scenarios where the Moodle box makes perfect sense. Where there is no internet and people can't get internet, then use the Moodle box. Or when temporarily means, okay, you have every day five minutes internet. Or you have content which is actually impossible to get to the users. Then the Moodle box makes sense. But if this is not the case, think about it, uh, then maybe other options are more, let's say, convenient, easier to set up, more sustainable at the end. Yeah? And of course, the most simple solution would be the online, the normal Moodle online. People go online with the browser. This would be the easiest solution. How much do we have? I promised instructional design. I'm so sorry that I have rushed through that. But you see some, uh, uh, some let's say, which impact does the instructional design have to Moodle? I was talking about the project with the uh, ultrasound machinery. We used videos, but the cool thing was we used very static videos. We, we used recordings from PowerPoint. Sounds boring, but the thing is we compressed it and the video was smaller than the PowerPoint itself that we recorded, yeah? which means, okay, we had actually, we could make use of the dual channel of visual and of sound and uh, provide it to the learners. Yeah. So um, if, we, if we would have put just for instance, I've seen some videos where there's somebody's talking and they're through the PowerPoint presentation, we didn't do that because a person which is moving around, you can't compress it that nicely. It will be big. It will be not accessible for the users. Um, these are all um, interactivities in Moodle. Maybe you know it. This is the feedback. This is the assignment, quiz, H5P, Scrum packages, forum. These are all available in Moodle and these are offline available. Yeah. And here, the media, of course, images, please, uh, images, video, or files or audio. This is all available offline on the app. So um, as well, of course, on the Moodle platform, on the Moodle box. So here is some, uh, you have the slides. You can even be analyzed, okay, which interactivity and which content makes sense or which can cause trouble. Doesn't mean don't use video, but use it with care. So do we have time for the recommendations? That's nice. Make things smaller, yeah, please. If you use the content, please provide it in a way that the fine, in the final stage. We have seen uh, courses for uh, regions where we know there is no real possibility to download. They had four gigabyte. People were asking, why is this not working? Of course, you can't download four gigabyte if you have uh, a modem-like connectivity. Please compress it, cut it, static content adapted for the final use case. So if you use a, an image with 200 uh, a thumbnail, please don't use the original image with 2,000, 2,000 pixels. Check your interactivities, uh, avoid bandwidth inter intense activities, um, especially for the Moodle app. Um, check if chosen interactivity is available on the app. This is growing every day. So please, if I say now this is not working, maybe tomorrow it is. Align technologies, choose the less complex solution. 
Here are some other initiatives that we are already have experience with and time's up. Thank you.